to use ChatGPT and OpenAI APIs in your Power Automate desktop flows, you go up to Actions, and here you search for an Invoke web service, and you drag it in. Here we will fill in the parameters. First, we will need a URL, and for that, we open up a browser and navigate to platform.openai.com. In case you don't have an API key, I created a guide up here, it's a two minute guide, that will take you through the steps. Once that is done, we will continue here. So first, we will go to API reference and scroll a little bit down here to making requests. You can see this URL here, you will just mark it and copy it over to Power Automate Desktop. Paste in the URL. Then the method that is post, we are posting something to this API. Change the XML to JSON and change the XML here. Then in the headers, we need the authorization. And for that, I go back. Here, you copy all of this, Control C, go back to Power Automate Desktop, Control V, and instead of this OpenAI API key, here we will um, paste in our API key. So I go back here, then in the browser, you click this lock here, and here you can see the API keys. We create a new secret key. I could call this one Power Automate Desktop and create secret key. This key I can copy and when I click done, this key is uh, hidden and I can never recall it. So do save it if you plan to reuse it. You can always delete this and create new ones instead. Then I go back here. So instead of all of this, I say control V, I paste in my API key. Then we need a request body. For that, go back here, I click done. I go up here and click this icon, go back to the API reference. I scroll down to making requests. And what you need here is to copy from this down to this, so the curly brackets. Then we go back to Power Automate Desktop, paste it in here, and I like to structure this a little bit better so we can see what's going on. So here, I just inline these a little bit prettier, it's not needed. And I also do this. So, and again, I like to have the curly brackets on each separate lines so I can see what's going on. So right now, uh, we also have something called a temperature. That is the creativity. We actually don't need that. You can have it to control the creativity of the model, but we will keep it simple and let me do this. So we just have the model that is GPT 3.5 Turbo. We can easily change this to, for example, the GPT 4, or you can change it to newer models. Then here we take the role of a user and here we give our prompt. So let's do something more fun than say this is a test. That could be tell a joke about RPA. Developers. One thing that we will need is to go to advanced and here you will untick the encode request body. Then we click save. Now try to run it. It will take a few seconds. And if I go over here to my variables, then what you want here is to find the web service response and double click on it. Now I can expand it. And here you can see we have our joke. Why don't RPA developers play hide and seek? Because good luck hiding when they automate the process. I'm not sure if it's particularly fun, but we have called the open AI API. Let's expand it because we also need to pass this data. If we just took all of this data in the web service response, it will be very 
uh, hard to see what's going on. So we need to move into this content. First, we are passing this JSON to a custom object. And that's because a custom object is easy to work with in Power Automate Desktop. So what you do here is to find a convert, and then you say convert JSON to custom object and drag it in. The JSON that we want to convert, that is the web service response. So click the X, double click the web service response. And here, instead of saying JSON as custom object, then I will just call it response custom object. It's optional, but then the variable name describes the data a little bit better. Then I click save. Now let's try to run it again. We do another call and then we will see our response custom object. Double click here. So what I want to do here, you can see that we have different keys or names, ID, object, created, model, choices, usage. Try to click them more on choices. And in here, our um, I click more again and click more here. There you have it. We have it hidden in the response custom object, choices, zero, because that's the first item in the array, message and content. We will use this expression to pass out the actual content, which is this joke. So go find a set variable and drag it in here. So this one I will call response. And down here, I will find the response custom object. And then we will need to add in hard brackets, I will say choices like this. And then I wanted to find the first element that is zero. And then I needed to go into message like this, and another hard bracket, content. So now we will have the response in a nice variable. So I'll click save here. And then we will click run. We're just doing the same thing. But what I want to see here is that the response variable is now the joke itself. That's the output. We could just change the prompt and let me show you the huge potential here. Because we don't want to tell jokes, we could process invoices or analyze sentiment. And here I have a case. So in the browser, I have reviews for a company. That's my company, by the way. And let's say I want to analyze sentiment on multiple or a single review that came in lately. So we'll just do it with one. So I'll take this one here. And what we will do here is to find a launch new Microsoft Edge. So before we do anything, we web scrape this social media a content, in this case, a Google review. And then we can analyze it with the OpenAI API. Here, I will not launch a new instance, but I will attach to a running instance. And I do this. And here, I'll pick the tab where it says Anas Jensen org reviews. This will create a browser variable. I'll click Save. Then I will use a get details of element on web page and drag it in here. We will create a new UI element. So I click this drop down. I'll say add UI element. And I'll just take this diff, which is the first review. So I'll press control, click with my mouse, and this UI element has been created. Let's rename it to review. And what this does is that it looks in the UI element, it takes the text out and stores it in a variable that we now call review. I'll click save. Now I will use this review in my prompt. So now it will not be tell the joke. And I could open up the here. Here I could create a variable for the prompt or we can just do this. So here I'll say analyze the sentiment and output the result. And let's say I just want it in five words. So it's easy digestible. Let's say I have multiple reviews daily of my company. So here I'll say the result in five words. And by the way, if you want to review this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help my channel a lot. Thank you. So here, and then I say encapsulate, encapsulate uh, the result 
in two, and then I'll say two pipes. That is just to have it easily passable once that is done, because sometimes it, it, the chat GPT, OpenAI APIs add some extra text. So now I want the result in here. And I'll also say, do not return any other text like this. I'll also attach my reviews. So here I will say, and here come the review colon and then I will have the review like this. So I'll just insert the variable that just got created before. I'll click save, then I'll click run. So the pass JSON is exactly the same. Now you can see here it, it attached to here. It did scrape and we go back here. And if I go to the response, here you can see that we have the sentiment analysis. It says that it's positive, impressed with Power Automate training. I created a complete guide to do sentiment analysis with Power Automate Desktop and GPT. It is right here and you should go watch it.